Good morning, my friends. I thought I would take a quiet morning to have some coffee with you in the garden and just share a little bit about our story and our journey. Phil and I have been happily married for 23 years. I had to throw in happily. Of course we're happy. We're still here 23 years later. Um, but I won't say that it's been without um, hardships and chaos and you know, all, all of the in-between. Uh, we have seven boys and three grandchildren. I think I should just maybe go in order and I'll introduce them to you and maybe we can throw in some clips of them. I'm not sure. Um, Brandon is our oldest. He is married to Selena and they have our two-year-old grandson, Dayton. And he is just the funnest little thing. You probably see him a lot in my earlier videos and he's definitely in my TikTok a lot because he does my morning chores with me often when he's here in the mornings. Then we have Philip who is single on his own. Um, he lives about 20 minutes from here. All of our kids live here in in the vicinity so that's nice. We, we get to see most of them often. Um, and then we have Boyd who's married to Whitney and they have two girls. Emma is five and a half and Vivian is two and a half. And those girls are just the light of my life. Uh, I always wanted girls and obviously I have seven boys. So um, I won't say that it replaces the need that I had for wanting girls, but it is, it is a beautiful thing to have granddaughters. Um, then we have Austin, who is our adopted son. Um, we adopted him oh, about five years ago as our son. He was actually one of our son's best friends. Both of his parents passed away when he was younger and we've just taken him in and he brings us absolute joy. Then we have Bailey. I'm trying to think in my head. I don't want to forget anybody. Uh, we have Bailey. He is also single, living on his own, um, also pretty close by, and just figuring his life out, so that's fun. And then we have Cole, and I'm going to include Caroline, although they're not married. Uh, they've been together for like 100 years, and I'm certain that they will get married, and um, she will be my third most beautiful daughter-in-law. I am so blessed. Uh, with daughter-in-laws that uh, love me and tolerate me and um, they're just they're all so good to me yeah being a boy mom I mean my boys spoil me too usually but there's just something special about daughter-in-laws I never had a relationship with my mother-in-law so I don't I didn't know what kind of mother-in-law to be or not to be um, I do always joke hair sticking out um I do always joke with them that like I don't want to be that mother-in-law and I hope I hope that I'm not so um so those those children are all ages 19 to 27 and then we have Matthias who I'm sure you've seen in some of the videos and I'll be sure to include a clip or a picture of him here and then um he's four and a half uh Phil and I have always decided that we would just kind of let God design our family um, but after 8 10 12 years you know we became content we we thought we thought for sure we were done and then um, and then came Matthias so um, he is Matthias actually means um, a gift from God he is wild beyond my wildest beliefs but he is also kind and gentle and just an amazing little human. Um, anyway, I don't want to talk about just one kid and not the rest because they're all amazing humans. So, uh, but I think having a young one again, I get to be, I'm home now. Um, I'm a nurse by trade, but when I found out that I was expecting with Matthias, I told Phil, it's your turn. Um, we're gonna have to figure this out because this is it this is this is my time like I'm gonna be home and 
I want to build my homestead and my dreams of being, I don't know, Carolyn Ingalls, I guess. <laughs> Probably cheesy, but I, I really do. Um, so why, if he's almost five, are we just starting this year? Well, we didn't actually own the house we lived in. And I mean, sure, I could have planted a garden. Our landlord was amazing. He would have let us do anything. Um, I just, I let, I let my mindset stop me and say, oh, you know, you can't do it until you own. Well, we bought this home in December. Um, it isn't really what we want for a forever home. The home is fine. It doesn't bother me. <clears throat> um, but we want land. We want, I want land. I know my husband does so bad. I know he would probably like to get the chickens a little further back from the house. Um, but yeah, a land is our dream. And so while I'm starting here and establishing here, I'm distracted by this little pollinator on this tomato plant. Um, <clears throat> I still try not to hesitate to say, oh, like I want to plant blueberries so bad. That one, I don't know if it's going to make it, but I don't want to like invest in 10 blueberry bushes and three years down the road we move and then I've got these beautiful established blueberry bushes and I got to start all over. So little things like that I try to think of in the back of my mind. Um, maybe I can put them in big pots for a few years. I don't know. I mean, I'm still looking at that because obviously I shouldn't have planted a blueberry bush in the middle of summer. So I have a few minutes to think about that. Okay, so now that I've just rambled on about our children and a quick tidbit about the the house um, I just want to touch base real quick about why now like why gosh, I'm 43 like why are we starting now well because it's never too late I'm I've let fear and anxiety of trying new things or starting new things or waiting until everything is just perfect I've let all that hold me back for my whole life and I, I just decided this year I'm not gonna do that anymore so that's why um, you get hot mess YouTube videos. Um, if you look back, I've even tried some videos before, um, but this is, this was always kind of like the ultimate goal, the dream like within that I never wanted to birth, I guess. I was just too afraid, too busy chasing other things. So um, we've had gardens before um, at our other houses, um, but it was with a different mindset. We basically just, you know, went the old school route, tilled up some, soil and planted stuff and then the weeds take over because you're working I'm, a lot of homesteaders work full-time and man i don't know how because I, I don't know i don't know i just have this little bit and i'm overwhelmed my first year so um but we would just plant and you know we would get what we would get and the weeds would be there i mean but i think the difference is now we are we're planting and planning for sustainability and for preservation. And so I just wanted to quickly, I've probably taken too much time already. Let me see if I can get that to brighten up a little bit. Um, but I wanted to just quickly, oh, I hear Olaf telling us good morning, um, explain like kind of how I'm doing things my first year. Um, I know I've mentioned to you guys that I planted way too many tomatoes, way too close together. Um, some other things are just a hodgepodge. Honestly, in my free time, I watch a whole lot of YouTube. Um, and because that's where I want to be. Like, I don't know. I just watch to see, like, I'm already planning. It's the middle of July and I'm already thinking, okay, like, what can I still plant in some of the empty space that I have? what should I be planting to prepare for fall? Cause there's some fall crops. And I'm excited to know that uh, you can actually still plant zucchini cause it's like a mid season crop. And um, I may actually try that because this zucchini plant, although it's like ginormous and green and plush, it's not producing a whole lot of zucchini. So um, I may try another plant. Um, so I keep this little notebook just for those beginners that are wondering how to do things, I don't know. I'm not saying I'm doing things right. This is definitely not a how-to channel as of yet. You know, maybe a few years down the road. Um, but I currently just write down everything I've planted that I can remember because the tomatoes are like a huge hodgepodge. Um, but I try to remember like what I've planted, what's working, what's not working. Like don't plant your pumpkins where you did, knucklehead. 
Um, I've learned a lot this first year. I do come out here. I don't have a ton of weeds actually, probably because I didn't till my ground. Um, I did, I just purchased soil from the landscaping yard and, and I've been covering it with mulch. So um, this year I've got my compost bin. We'll add that in for next year. And then I, I don't know, lost my train of thought there. So I had to get back on track. I get nervous, you guys. I really get nervous sitting here talking to myself. Um, but yeah, so the notebook is just kind of what I've been using for myself to note down what I'm doing, what's working, what's not working, what I want to do next year. Um, and then I'll go from there. And I hope that in the fall, there'll be a lot of more, a lot of more, a lot more planning um, of the area that I have and figuring out like what grows better together. Um, I would have loved to have tried carrots and I've learned recently that they grow really well with like your tomatoes, except I would have never been able to do that year, this year because I planted my tomatoes. I think you're supposed to plant them like 18 inches apart and I probably have mine six to 12 inches apart. Like they're way too close. I spent an hour and a half yesterday um, see, I should have videoed that. I need to learn like when to video things more often when you're documenting your life as a homesteader. Uh, I have, I did create like a hog panel trellis. I didn't do it quite right. I could have actually like lifted my trellis. I didn't make it as long as the bed and I had more plants. I just used a piece that I had. So I had one plant like in your standard like tomato cage. And then another one kind of next to it. Well, the whole thing fell over, the cage and all. Like the tomato plant was so, they're so big. I, I feel like they're big. Um, I see other people, even local, <laughs> theirs are bigger, but they're, they're doing well for being so crowded. Um, but yeah, it took me like an hour and a half to like find something around here without, I obviously can't move everything. And I couldn't get the cage off of the plant because it's too big. Um, I don't wanna like cut the cage and ruin it, although it was what, probably 50 cents. Uh, but anyway, so yeah, it took me, I did all that, pruned some more. Uh, we've had so much rain. I think it's been a little better for me. Um, I know a lot of people have suffered because of the rain. I don't, I don't know if it's because I'm in raised beds or, or what, but the rain hasn't, hasn't really hurt my crops any. Um, but yeah, and I just went through and I tried to trim up some other stuff and I'll probably just keep doing that this week. It's, it's kind of a calmer weather week and um, I'll probably try to do all that. So I think I'm gonna wrap up our morning coffee because I did say I wanted to keep this video shorter. And I'm pretty sure I've been rambling for a long time. I don't know how people, I feel like I watch videos on YouTube that are eight to 10 minutes and they pack in so much information and I'm over here just rambling in a jumbled mess. But. Um, I just wanted to take a moment and say thank you. Thank you if you're here and you're following. If you want to share with other people, that would be great. <clears throat> we would really love to grow our channel and our following and like just have people grow with us. Uh, that's it. You know, a little cheesy. Don't forget to like my videos and subscribe. Um, <clears throat> but just from a genuine level, I um, would love to have you join us and see us. I have recently updated like Facebook and Instagram. So we are there now as the Humble Homestead. And that's all. I hope everybody has a wonderful week and we'll talk soon.